Hi guys, welcome back and happy new year, 2021. Um, I'm gonna take you on a little walk today through this park I'm in right now, which is uh, Chujang Park, or South Lake Park, as it's more commonly known by people here, through a nice part of Xi'an, and then uh, hopefully we'll finish at the Big Wild Goose Pagoda, which is probably the most famous building in Xi'an. And it's very, very cold, so hopefully I can do it without having to, you know, run into a coffee shop. <laughs> So while we're walking, we'll have a little chat about 2020, the year that was, and um, the good and the bad, I think, that we got from this year. And um, we'll have a quick look forward to this year, 2021, because I've got some pretty nice plans in place already, because I'm officially on my winter holiday now for two months. I've got two months off work, so plenty of stuff on the way. As you can probably tell from the video and the fact that I'm actually having difficulty talking, it's absolutely freezing today. Freezing cold. Um, my phone says it's minus seven, which to be honest, in all the time I've been in Xi'an, I don't actually remember ever being this cold. I've had a bit of a cold snap the last few days. So 2020, what a crap year, <laughs> what a crap year. Uh, and it continues to be, unfortunately. I think, you know, I don't think 2021 is going to be much better for the world, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it's been quite a sad year and eye-opening as well. I think, you know, being here in... I've been in China for the whole year, obviously. I came back to China from England after last Christmas on the 23rd of January, the day that Wuhan, Wuhan went into lockdown. So obviously the whole uh, COVID situation's been well in hand here for, man, months and months and months and months since, to be honest, April, with a few little minor outbreaks, which have been controlled pretty quickly. And I don't know, it's been a bit, it's been a bit crap living here, reading all the stuff back home about, you know, when, when we went to lockdown here in February, January, and it was so, the West was so critical of it, you know, so critical about how it's controlling people and we have an app with a QR code and it's gonna control people's lives. And then fast forward months down the line and they're doing the same thing. It's like, well, people aren't following the rules, right? Of course they're not because you told them it was all about government control when it was here. So, you know, stop talking bullshit. This, I think it's a this pseudo cold war that we're still living in. God, it's so damaging to people. Makes no sense at all. But that's the way it's going. So I remember um, comparing articles from newspapers, you know. Um, yeah. And when they wrote an article about, it was the QR code system that came in in China. There was an article that The Guardian wrote about it that was so critical. And it was just full of negativity. You know, basically, it's all welly and nightmare that was being created here. Anyway, the QR code system, we barely really use it anymore, but it's still there if we need it. And, uh, you know, months later, it was only a couple of months ago, I think, the UK implemented their world-beating, as Boris Johnson said, QR code system. And The Guardian wrote an article about it, and it said how great it was, it's gonna make a big change, and it's like, man, a lot of people in England don't believe half the crap that gets said about this pandemic right now part of me thinks okay they're idiots right but the other part is like they are getting a lot of mixed messages aren't they and this this constant need of this ideological warfare west versus east democracy versus one party state like in china it's like god damn it's a it's a it's a pandemic just deal with it political point scoring a lot of crap i think it's been um for me, I think, you know, living here, it has been pretty eye-opening eye and to be honest, quite sad because, you know, I'm looking back at the UK and talking to my friends there all the time and it's just like, I don't really see, I don't, I don't think anyone does, no one really sees how this is going to end. Great, we've got a vaccine and how long is it going to take them to give everyone that? How long is it going to be effective for? There's no way it's going to just solve it, right? I think we all know that. Anyways, not going to talk too much about 
COVID that has dominated 2020. And to be honest, I think it's gonna probably dominate 2021 as well, which is a bit crap. For me, you know, I've been trying to think about the positives and the negatives on a personal level. You know, I think, I think I've got you, you know, there's been some good things I think that I've got from this year and probably some not so good things as well. So let's start with a good, shall we? I think because I've been here all year, usually I don't stay in China for a full year. I usually go home to the UK or go elsewhere for holidays and stuff. This year has rekindled my love of uh, travel in China, which is completely insane in a pandemic. <laughs> Yeah, when to be honest people should stay put that's the most important thing people don't move around it's much easier to control the pandemic but actually that's just a testament to how well it has been handled here um, because in the summer I could travel very freely and, uh, and everyone was but that's what happens when you deal with it well when an actual country deals with the problem well um, obviously most articles written about China's handling of the COVID situation will always relate to, you know, some other sinister side that's probably just a lot of rubbish. But this is the world we live in, right? You'll read a lot of positive articles about New Zealand's handling of the, <laughs> the pandemic. They did a great job. Actually, they did do a great job. It's amazing. Congratulations to New Zealand and all the people there on, uh, you know, sorting it out. It's also an island far away from everything else with a very small population. No one talks about Vietnam, right? Like 100 million people. There were 35 deaths from COVID. No one talks about it. Do not talk about it. And no one really talks in very positive terms about China's success. It's the most populated country on earth. It's where it began when literally nobody knew anything about it. And uh, difficulties at the beginning. And then after that uh you know pretty much just dealt with it amazing stuff so i've been traveling because it's been handled so well here which is wonderful um, if you watch my old videos from summer i did travel quite a bit i traveled around the south of this province which i've never been to had a great time you know learning some history seeing some places that to be honest people don't really go to but obviously the highlight for me this year was my gansu trip gansu province if you didn't see the videos it's a beautiful, beautiful part of China. Um, it's too, it kind of veers out to the north west of the country. And I traveled for a month from the south to the north through snowy Tibetan, uh, a Tibetan part of the country, which is just beautiful. Like it's sublimely beautiful. Through the Silk Road and up to the deserts of the north. It was phenomenal and it really made me, you know, fall back in love with travel here because I haven't really traveled in China for a long time you know like most places when you live somewhere for a long time you don't you don't tend to travel <laughs> in the country or the place you live you go elsewhere and because I've been here for so long I, that's what I've been doing I have a holiday I go back to the Europe usually to the, to the UK or I'll go to Malaysia or somewhere nice like that and uh, it's just made me realize there's still so much of this country that I haven't seen and uh, there's so much still out there to see which is great I think it's also just opened my eyes to, you know, the, some of the problems of the world, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, I don't know. I found it quite difficult. I, you know, it's, it's made me have a lot more appreciation for the place that I live here in China. I think I've been made to be, to be honest, with a few exceptions, to be very, very welcome this year. There have been a few exceptions where people have, you know, Ask me questions like thinking, I don't know, I've just come off the plane, <laughs> come off a plane from the UK, and I'm just like full of COVID or whatever. But by and large, people have been incredibly welcoming and um, kind of understanding, and actually asked a lot about my home and friends and family and how they're all doing, which is quite sweet. It makes you just make you feel quite nice because it's been quite difficult, you know. I think having everyone back home, worrying about them all the time. But anyway, for me personally, I think some of the, maybe some of the, the biggest negative I've got from this year, personally, is not being able to, you know, <laughs> being locked down and stuff, because we haven't been, um, 
I've just become very, I think I've just become very lethargic. I don't think I've been anywhere near as active as I have been, you know, well, in the rest of my life. I think uh, I just haven't been able to get back into the gym, feel a bit out of shape, put on some weight, you know, just feel a bit crap, basically. Which leads me on to 2021. 2021 is just around the corner and um, I am almost on my winter holidays. I have two months free. So I'm gonna bring you a lot of videos, I hope. But I have one plan in place already and I'm gonna be on my way there in less than a week. So what I've decided to do is I'm gonna go to Wudang Mountain. Um, it's a very famous mountain in China. It's one of the most famous Taoist mountains in China and it's the home of uh, tai Chi, Tai Chi Chuan and, uh, and other such things. So I'm gonna go and live there for a month <laughs> in the winter. So I found a, a, a nice little school on the mountain. So I'm gonna go there, stay there for a month, study Tai Chi and, uh, and uh, just yeah, live a bit of a Taoist life for a while, you know? My main reason for going, to be honest, well, there's a few reasons I want to go. Firstly, I want to get in shape. I, like I said, I do feel a bit grim and horrible this year. I want to get in shape, lose some weight, get fit, get stronger, get more flexible. And um, I want to learn. I want to learn Chinese martial arts again. So yeah, it's going to be uh, super cold on the mountain snowy I guess and I imagine that the living conditions are you know <laughs> they're probably not great but I think it's a good thing for me to do you know um, for both physical and mental self um, yeah so it's gonna be tough challenge I think it's what I need start 2021 in a more positive way than 2020 started it's gonna be good so apparently it's about six or seven hours of uh, training a day <laughs> which is a lot um, so yeah, good, looking forward to it. Wudang Mountain's great as well. Uh, I visited a couple of years ago, three years ago maybe? And um, it's a beautiful part of it. It's a beautiful place. It's absolutely beautiful. But obviously I visited as a tourist, so I was only there for like a couple of days. Um, I think to live there for a month, I think I'll get a real good feel of it and uh, hopefully I have a lot of chance to explore, see what's going on, because it's a huge, actually it's a mountain range. There are 72 peaks and it's full of monasteries and temples and things looking forward to it so I'm not a complete stranger to um, to Chinese martial arts when I was uh, how old late teens early 20s I studied uh, Kung Fu and Tai Chi for, for quite, a, quite, quite a few years and and put a lot of time and effort into it and I loved it to be honest I think it's one of the main things that really developed my interest in moving to China and Chinese history and Chinese culture. But then when I moved to China, I, uh, well, I, I did study Tai Chi for a little bit in Xi'an, but I felt like when I first came here, my language skills were not really good enough to <laughs> understand the finer details. Uh, but it's something I've always wanted to get back into. So uh, I've still got some reasonable knowledge of it, but to be honest, strength, fitness wise, I'm an absolute beginner. I think that's gonna be the most difficult thing for me. Getting up in the morning, in the cold, going for a run, press ups on my fingertips, you know, this kind of stuff. So that's my first plan for the new year. That's gonna be basically all of January. Um, whether I'll be able to upload any videos during that time, I highly doubt it because, um, you know, I'm sure that if there is any kind of phone signal, it's probably gonna be pretty crap. Anyway, um, when I come back, it's, it's Chinese New Year. And I'm still gonna have another, to be honest, another month or so before I have to go back to work. So I've got a few little trips planned to different provinces, but I wanna keep those ones a secret. But they're, they're gonna be good, I'm looking forward to them. Anyway, keep an eye on the channel. Uh, plenty more stuff on the way. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, I hope the next year is a little bit better for everyone. And I'll see you soon. I'll show you where I've just arrived at, as I planned. That is the big wild goose pagoda of Xi'an. It's the most famous landmark in the city, kind of a symbol of the whole place, to be honest. Built in 652. 
CE in the uh, in the Tang Dynasty. Beautiful building it is. All right, guys, I got my copy. Hope you have a great 2021 and a happy new year. All the best, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.